Want five-star service from a financial institution you can trust? Whitney Bank has you covered with nearly 200 locations across the Gulf South. So stop by today. Learn more at HancockWhitney.com. Member FDIC. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker. Established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base, joneswalker.com, and by Business First Bank, with locations throughout the state, including 11 offices in the Baton Rouge area, providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank, banking with greater momentum. From Mansur's on the Boulevard in Baton Rouge, we're out to lunch with editor of the Baton Rouge Business Report, Stephanie Regal. It's business Baton Rouge style. Hi, I'm Stephanie Regal. Welcome to Out to Lunch. Fitness has evolved from being a craze back in the 1970s and 80s to becoming a way of life today. And Baton Rouge entrepreneurs have come up with all sorts of interesting and innovative ways to keep customers in the capital region in good shape. El Mahoney is the franchise owner and Louisiana area representative for Orange Theory Fitness, a new type of fitness center that's taking the local market and the country by storm. Orange Theory offers 60-minute group interval workouts that combine cardio and strength training with some pretty smart science, pushing participants into the orange zone where their heart rates are pumping and they're burning the maximum amount of calories. Elle opened her first Orange Theory in Town Center in Baton Rouge in 2016. A second location will open later this year in Long Farm. Elle, welcome to Out to Lunch. Thank you. So happy to be here. Alicia Willamette is a veteran yoga instructor and the owner of the Louisiana Yoga School, which opened earlier this year and offers training to the growing number of yoga instructors in the area. Alicia doesn't actually have a brick-and-mortar yoga school. Rather, she goes around to the different yoga studios popping up all over Baton Rouge these days and holds her 200-hour training seminars there. Alicia has taught as an instructor at several studios in the area, including Yoga Bliss, Perusa, and Agami, and says the market doesn't need another studio, but it does need well-trained teachers. Alicia, welcome to Out to Lunch. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Well, Al, I'm going to start with you. So orange is the new black, orange is the new workout craze. What's with the orange thing? Orange is the new fit. Orange is it. <laughs> um, what, it's a cardio zone, more specifically in this context. It's yes? high energy interval training. Okay. Um, and so the science is that if we raise and lower our heart rate, um, that is an expression of the fitness of our cardiovascular system. Okay. So it's not about how high you can get your heart, it's how quickly you can get a high heart rate back down into a calm zone. So that stress on the heart makes it stronger. It's a muscle and it's a muscle that drives the whole cardiovascular system. And so the theory is that when you are bringing it up and down like that, mm -hmm. you are burning more fat and calories necessarily? Yes. Um, breathing harder is what is the exchange, the chemical exchange to burn fat. So we want to raise our heart rate, but we want to raise it and lower it and raise it and lower it. Um, if you spend about 20 minutes or so in a one hour period with an elevated heart rate, you are um, kickstarting your metabolism. Okay. So yes, you're burning fat, but we also want to redefine the composition of the body and grow more muscle. Okay. So we really want to exchange fat and turn it into <laughs> muscle, so to speak, growing so, muscle. So what kind of fat. exercises and workouts do you do in a 60 minute session? At Orange Theory. So half of the class is a cardio, um, which is uh, done primarily on treadmills, whether that's power walking or running. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is we use uh, water rowers where you're seated and you're pulling a, um, a handle with paddles in a water tub. So it really does feel like wow. you're rowing. And that uses 80% of the body's muscles. 60% is legs and hips. So you're really getting a great workout that is low impact sure. on that one. And then after that, after the cardio portion, you go and? The other half of the class that you're gonna spend in that 60 minutes is doing strength and power exercises on the floor with dumbbells, with TRX straps, with uh, BOSU balls and medicine balls and ab dollies and various implements of torture that <laughs> we uh, design a different template for every class. So every day is a different template 
Okay, very interesting. And Alicia, yoga is another type of fitness, another type of exercise that really focuses on strength and flexibility and breathing, just like cardio, that, that's just as important. How do you make sure that yoga instructors n know what they need to know? We go through Yoga Alliance, which right now it's the only body that kind of oversees and um, determines how many hours of studies need to be done, say for like 20 hours of anatomy, 100 hours of practice, uh, about 20 hours of philosophy. So through Yoga Alliance, we follow that blueprint. Um, and then from there, we bring in the different specialists. So I, I can sit here and talk about anatomy, <laughs> but why would I do that when one of our instructors, Tina Ufford, uh, she used to teach massage therapy over at Moore College. Okay. She comes in and leads the 20 hours of anatomy that they're required to learn. So Yoga Alliance gives us that blueprint, and then we start there and then continue. And Yoga Alliance is a national organization. It is, yes. Okay. And so you go around to the different yoga studios? Yes, town. yeah. So we are based out of a friend's house uh, in the Mid-City area. So that's where a lot of our lectures happen. But then we also, for our special weekend workshops, when we bring in guest teachers, we rent out Purusha. We've rented out One Heart Yoga downtown, um, Yoga Path on Jefferson. They mm -hmm. just moved from Acadian to Jefferson. So that's the idea is to rent out a number of locations. So then we're providing a quality education experience for the students. We're bringing in some of the local instructors and giving them a chance to totally geek out and offer what they love <laughs> about the practice. Uh, and then the idea is then to put money back into the community by renting out the yoga studios. So everybody gets taken care yeah. of. So how is Baton Rouge as a yoga market? As, as we've discussed before, and as I mentioned in the introduction, it seems like there's a lot of yoga studios out there all of a sudden in the past five years. Definitely, yeah. It continues to grow. And I think that, you know, as you mentioned, there's a fitness trend right now. And yoga is very much a part of that. So you see studios popping up here and there. Yeah, over the last four years or five years, when I first moved here, I think there were maybe three studios. Mm -hmm. And now I could probably count about eight or nine spaces where people are offering yoga. And that doesn't include the Y and some of the gyms. Which, right, which have um, their own classes. So it continues to grow. And with that, it's great that people want to practice yoga. And what we're seeing is that more medical professionals, chiropractors, um, social workers, therapists, uh, OBGYNs, they're starting to refer their patients more to yoga. So with that, and part of the reason why this school exists is because now more than ever, we need skilled instructors. Because if a doctor is sending somebody to us, we better know what we're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and this is your business. You're not part of a franchise. This Correct. Is yeah, this is my baby. <laughs> now, L, how is the market here for your business. I mean, the people I know are just nuts about Orange Theory. It seems to really yeah. be doing well here, but it seems like a very Dallas, very trendy sort of thing. It's, it's doing well in Baton Rouge? Yes, it is. Um, the, I'm the area representative okay. of the franchise in the state, and so there are certain licenses that I've sold. The town center one is owned by Scott Russell, and the, there's another owner in Lafayette, and another owner in Shreveport. Um, I own the others um, that are in New coming as well. in New Orleans, yes, okay. and um, then we'll open the next two in Baton Rouge as well. But um, the the fitness industry in general, because all of us are hearing the same message from society, from our doctors, from our spouses, from our friends who are partaking and gaining the benefits of better exercise and uh, better fitting clothes. Um, happier, energetic right. kind of people are better employees and they live longer and the price for medical care goes down. So it's just a win-win for society. So that message is loud and clear. And young people, you know, are just continuing their active lives as you are when you're a kid into adulthood through things like your yoga and art and CrossFit and all the other, you know, anything to do with fitness and health is 
uh, we're on the same team. I don't see that as competition at all because getting people moving and feeling better about themselves is what we're after. Well, um, and the more and the more active they are, the, the more variety they're looking for. Yeah, I think they get bored just definitely. running or just going to the exactly. gym. So they want something like Orange Theory or yoga. Yeah. Or when they get hurt from running too much, they... Right, and yoga is a great complement to Orange Theory mm -hmm. because it's you really need to take the time to stretch, mm -hmm. and you know the calmness that comes with yoga, and the alertness that comes with yoga feeds into uh, your focus when you're doing a more high energy and uh, uh, exercises that focus on form to avoid hurting yourself. And I just think it's a great, I, I'm also a yoga teacher and I'm a long time <laughs> yogi. So uh, I think that Orange Theory and yoga are just a beautiful complement to one another. Definitely, yeah. I'm having more people come to me because I also offer private yoga sessions over at Future Fitness, so we're actually neighbors. Oh, good. And I'm having more people come in there and you know, especially after they work out because of just that, especially with the high intensity training Mm -hmm. and um, you know getting the heart rate up where you're not necessarily going to get that in a yoga class but then mm -hmm. they come there back to yoga for the stretching to increase their flexibility and yeah. their agility so that way right. they see you know greater performance whenever they are doing that high intensity training mm -hmm. now what about the group fitness aspect to this I, I mean mm -hmm. I, I suppose it's it's essential to the orange theory model you have class yeah, it is. It's, it's essential to the price point because you're getting the benefits of a personal trainer at the price point of group training. Um, but there's also this element of community that mm -hmm. we really strive to encourage and people respond to. Um, you're really doing your own workout, but you're, because you're in a group, you can, if you are a competitive person, you can use that person that's on either side of you to push you a little bit further. Um, but it's still, you're wearing a heart rate monitor and it's your heartbeat that you're looking at your results on the screen in real time. So it's your own workout. It's, it's just the best of both worlds. And then afterward, you're getting to talk with the other people for the moments that you're together before or after class. And these are like-minded people. How, how much does it cost to... Um to participate it, or to buy a subscription to Orange Theory? It's about 11 to $13 per class it comes out. And That's there's no really contracts. Good. It's um it's just month to month, or you can buy a package of classes that last for a year. Can you buy um, a single class for eleven dollars? No, you can okay. buy a single <laughs> a single drop in class yeah. is the first one is always free to a mm -hmm. local resident, and then afterward, if you only wanted to drop in, it's twenty eight dollars. Okay. So obviously, we're encouraging people to become a member and go on the month to month routine. And then, how many classes do you all offer a day? Depending on how many members are um, in a studio, we adjust, bring on more classes with more trainers. Um, we have 13 classes a day, um, and so we're running about 250 or so people That's great. through the studio <laughs> every That's day. That's great. What about uh, you, Alicia? W what are the numbers behind the yoga school? With the yoga school, um, right now, we have we're limiting our 200 hour teacher training to about 10 participants mm -hmm. just keeping it small keeping it cozy because with the yoga school and doing a 200 hour certification there's actually two aspects of it there is the part where you learn to teach but at the same time there's the second part where we explore the practices deeper ourselves and we explore the philosophy behind the practice and um that yoga, although a lot of people think of it as a physical exercise, especially in the West, it is very, very spiritually enriched. Mm -hmm. So we go deep into the philosophy and, you know, you don't have to necessarily embrace the philosophy to see the results of yoga, but it can empower your spiritual life or whatever your spiritual beliefs are. Um, so there's also this process of self-transformation from the inside out that has nothing to do with downward facing dog. Right. So um, because you're doing that kind of inner work, it's nice to keep it small um, and 
I've, I've thought about expanding that number, but for now, that's that's a cozy little number for everybody nice. to share, you know, and be vulnerable. And uh, so, yeah, we're capping it at 10, but then we also offer other courses. So um, in June, we have a yoga therapy course coming up with Jean Cowan. And that one is maxed out at 15 people. And that's purely because a lot of yoga studios um, max out around 15 to 25 people, but still um, trying to offer, even though you're in a group environment, making sure that each student has um, enough one-on-one time with the teachers. Are you hearing from the yoga studios in this market that they are feeling the pressure from all the competition, or is there still enough business and demand go around? I think it depends on when you, what day you ask each studio, (laughs) you know, because there's definitely summers tend to slow down, holidays slow down, but as you've probably seen, uh, everything increases around January 1st. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) There's a boost there, but I think that's, you know, as you had mentioned, I don't really think that we need another yoga studio. I think each studio could probably be a little bit fuller at this point. I hear like in markets like New York and California when you go to yoga that everybody's flushed up against each other. Yeah, no, There's plenty of space to here. move around in Baton Rouge. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Stephanie Regal. We're talking to Alicia Willamette of the Louisiana Yoga School and Elle Mahoney of Orange Theory Fitness. How did you all get into this? Did you start out in fitness, Elle? Yeah, I grew up at the beach in Fort Lauderdale running on the beach and playing nice. tennis and um, just was encouraged by my family to continue being outdoorsy. And when I moved to California to go to college, um, I found Jazzercise mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, Gilda Marks was starting her whole program. And I just, I guess, eventually became what's known as a gym rat and worked out. I always found time to do exercise, whether I was pursuing school, working Um, traveling the world. I was a a global account manager for IBM and Siemens for 25 years and I always found my hotel based on whether or not it had a little fitness area where I could lift my (laughs) weights and could I run safely where it was. Um, So it's just always been a part of my life. But you were not in the fitness industry for much of your your career. No, I went to my first Orange Theory seven years ago in Fort Lauderdale where it started and um, was was a member there and when they said that they were going to start franchising, I said, oh, that means I could own a business like this. I'll get out of the corporate world and go and own a business. So, Oh, that's so great. I uh, th- started in, I opened two in Tallahassee and then wanted more. And they said, well, Louisiana's available. And I said, oh, New Orleans is in Louisiana. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to Louisiana and I've been here for two and a half years and bringing the orange across the state. Great. And do you are you glad you made the move? I mean, oh, I'm so from happy. IBM corporate world to, yeah. to this? Yeah, you know, corporations are wonderful. I learned a lot about um, working and focused and uh, being responsive and persistent and following through and customer service and why that matters. Um, but in a, in a small business, first of all, everything you touch, you see the results of. And it's really that that high touch feeling. We I like to say we have a um, customer service organization with a fitness product because it's really about serving people. What do they want? We have a world class fitness program, but the way you implement that is through how you interact with people. And we really want to honor where they are. If mm-hmm. they start very deconditioned and intimidated there's a place for them here. This isn't just for high, highly trained athletes at all. Um, so, And people do find that if they can overcome that first fear of walking back in the door when they haven't worked out or their experience at gyms is, what do I do here now? Um, right. It's very boring or it's stinky or, you know, dirty and, you know, all the negative things that they bring to the table, we really try and counter with something that's clean and friendly and approachable and we try to give them that touch so that they can participate and change their lives and that's the key for me is we get to change people's lives that's great you don't feel that so much at IBM (laughs) (laughs) oh they would probably beg to differ big blue (laughs) sure Alicia how did you get into the yoga business were you always a practitioner no well I took my first yoga class back in probably 2005, 
and you know it didn't start I feel very spiritually driven now but it didn't start off that way uh, a very good friend she was actually my boss at the time I was living in Aspen working on top of the mountain and I showed up for work <laughs> and not feeling well because I was partying very hard in Aspen <laughs> and I was like please let me go home early and she was like under one condition she's like you have to come to a yoga class with me so my very first yoga class was a hot class uh, wow. it was Bikram and I was slightly hungover, <laughs> and I thought I was going to die the whole entire time. And then, but afterwards, after those 90 minutes, uh, something felt good, yeah. you know, walking out and just all of a sudden things were greener, you know, the, and nature seemed more beautiful. So I was like, okay, there's something to this. So I dabbled for um, probably about three years, like dropping in here and there. So, you know, I was feeling really good if I went to maybe two or three classes a week. And then um, I lost my dad unexpectedly. Oh. And then it, after that, it led to a lot of anxiety. And I turned to my yoga practice and I learned how to breathe and I learned how to move through grief. And after experiencing the healing effects of yoga, I thought, okay, I think I want some more of that. So I went and I did my first 200 hour teacher training at an ashram outside of Boulder. And I stayed there for a month and I loved it so much that I went back to Aspen. I quit my marketing job for Aspen Skiing Company and moved into the ashram for about another three months and really embraced the yoga and the meditation and just diving fully into the practice. And then when I felt like my time there was over, um, I'm originally from Louisiana, okay. so my best friend was here at the time. She's like, I think they have a yoga studio here <laughs> if you want to come home, you know. I was like, well, I'll try it out and see if it works. If not, I'll go back to Aspen. You know, really hard life. I have to choose right. between, like, family and friends in South Louisiana and Aspen. And uh, anyhow, so I thought I'll just ride that wave as long as it, it will last. And I got a yeah. job at Yoga Bliss. And here I am, I think, like, eight or nine years later, and it's still working out, you know. No, so that's great. Yeah. Are these types of, and I don't want to say high-end um, fitness options, but, I mean, it is pricey. Or, or is this type of, um, you know, yoga, I mean, you talk about living in Aspen here, and I, I mean, I know that Orange Theory isn't, isn't cheap. Is it accessible to, you know, just middle-class people living on a teacher's salary or something? That's where I was at when I um, was first starting to do seven years ago. Think about it. We were in the downturn. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. um, decided to leave IBM Siemens and uh, thought, oh, I'll go out on my own and be a consultant. And then the downturn happened. So, yeah, I had no money, but it's what my priority is. So right. I wasn't going to Starbucks. I wasn't going out and drinking on uh, Friday nights and mm -hmm. blowing, you know, $75 at the bar. Um, I wasn't going and shopping and buying clothes. You know, there's a million things that we find money for, and it's just what we prioritize. So um, surely someone who's on, uh, you know, making $20,000 a year is not going to probably do Orange Theory Fitness, but there are fitness options for them. And it's a great place. Any place is a good place to go in and um, experience it and figure out what you need to do and then append it with, affordable outdoor things we live in louisiana you should be able to work out outside go get you know on your feet yeah. um walk bicycle um canoe etc you know you can go and experience really fitness is about having an active lifestyle and so tasting what you can to mm -hmm. what you can afford to learn how to do it the best way i think is a great way to go about it no question. For other people, it is addictive, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> we, sell, we, we say we sell fitness crack at Orange Theory. <laughs> right. um, I experienced it. Look at me. I started as a member, and here I am an owner. So mm -hmm. it, it happens. Yeah. Beware. But I think it is affordable. It's really what we prioritize in our lives. Listen, um, diabetes costs about $10,000 a year. Yeah. So can you afford... Orange theory. And, and certainly, we, we rank as the, the diabetes capital of the nation, mm -hmm. you know? Obesity yep. and diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who are your um, target clients? What is your target market? Is it mostly women? Is it equally divided between women and men? 30 to 50? 20 to 40? And for yoga, the demographic usually is women from, I believe it's about, say, 30 or 35 to about 45, 50. 
However, I'm seeing, I mean, the, the tables kind of turn with that. You know, I've se- I probably see just as many male private clients as I do female private clients, you know, and, and the teacher training, I guess, you know, out of 10 participants right now, we have two guys participating, but I, I think it is starting to vary. What about at Orange Theory? At Orange Theory, we start out typically with about um, 75% female. Mm -hmm. And it's more, I think, because of the group aspect of it that men fear it's going to be about choreography (laughs) and that kind of thing. Then once the studio opens and the females are going home and they're raving about it and their bodies are changing, then they start to drag their boyfriends and husbands and brothers in. And once a male comes in and does the workout and realizes how kicktail it is, (laughs) then their ego is involved and then they start joining and then it kind of starts shifting to about Mm 60-40 female male. Who is your biggest competition in this market? Would it be CrossFit, or is there really Um, nothing else like what you do? I think our biggest competition is the couch. (laughs) Um, You know, it's really just people who are sedentary and know they they need to, and they just spend time kind of guilting themselves that they're not doing it yet. It's, you know, fast food and, and sedentary lifestyle is the competition. Um, not to be too glib, but CrossFit is is very similar to ours. It's more about power. We're really not trying to create powerhouse, um, you know, lifters. Mm -hmm. Um, It's more just um, creating some muscle mass, some sinewy muscles to uh, change the body composition and um, creating that agility that you talked about, which Mm -hmm. is so important, really. What about your competition, Alicia? Is there anybody else offering this kind of training in the market? There are a couple of studios in town that are offering 200-hour teacher trainings. Um, The trainings that are available, though, are... um, they stay in one studio, mm-hmm. though. You know, it, it's part of that studio's offerings. So we're the only ones in this area. And I don't know about the rest of Louisiana, but we're the only ones that are independent and then can spread out our offerings. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, ladies, I'm so sad that we're out of time already. This went oh, so wow. fast. Went fast. <laughs> but El Mahoney and Alicia Willamette, it's great to have people like you in this market helping to create even more options for innovative and effective ways to stay in shape. So good luck with the growth of your respective endeavors. And thanks for joining me today on Out to Lunch. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We need to co-market. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I yeah, agree. We'll do that. <laughs> there are lots of synergies there. My guests today on Out to Lunch have been El Mahoney of Orange Theory Fitness and Alicia Willamette of the Louisiana Yoga School. You can find out more about Orange Theory Fitness and the Louisiana Yoga School by following the links on our website. It's batonrouge.la and wrkf.org. Today's show was recorded live over lunch at Mansur's on the Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Mansur's is open for lunch daily from 11 to 2, for dinner nightly, and for brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical producer is Eric Merle. Our associate producer is Peter Raschuti. And our Baton Rouge business consultants are Charlie D'Agostino and Ann Edelman. You can see photos from this show on itsbatonrouge.la and on our Facebook page. These photos are taken by Ken Stewart. All the music on Out to Lunch is composed and performed by Mitchell Foreman. You can find more of Mitchell's music wherever great jazz is streamed or sold and at mitchellforeman.com. You can get this show as a podcast, you can listen to past shows, and you can keep up with us on all kinds of social media by going to our websites, itsbatonrouge.la and wrkf.org. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsbatonrouge.la and WRKF 89.3 FM. I'm Stephanie Regal. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Mansur's for more business Baton Rouge style on Out to Lunch. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com and by Business First Bank, with locations throughout the state, including 11 offices in the Baton Rouge area, providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank, banking with greater momentum. 
Want five-star service from a financial institution you can trust? Whitney Bank has you covered with nearly 200 locations across the Gulf South. So stop by today. Learn more at HancockWhitney.com. Member FDIC.